Okay, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and close our eyes. Turn our palms up. What if you allowed your every particle, your every molecule to be completely drenched and bathed in the nourishment of your breath? What does the invitation of this simple allowance feel like in your being, in your body? And what if you refine the intention or attention upon your breath and invited the breath to caress and dance through the entirety of you with a deliberate offering of love? How would this affect or transform the molecules of you? How would your body respond? What parts of your being would be willing to receive this blessed offering. Keep your attention on your breath. And as you inhale, allow your heart space to expand. Keep your spine lifted, your heart buoyant. And as you exhale, simply relax. Energetically, how does it feel in your being, in your body, to expand your heart? Delight in this feeling of this soft, effortless expansion. As you inhale, invite your heart to open even beyond this place. Take your hands to your heart and quietly ask yourself, self, would you be willing to remember this feeling of infinite expansion, of sweet softness and opening, even inside of challenges, even in the midst of the illusion of struggle? body and heart, would you be willing to remind me of your capacity to open infinitely?
slowly release your chin to your heart, bowing into all the possibilities within you. Releasing your hands, lifting your chin, opening your eyes. Let's come to all fours and take them. So we're gonna open up the hands shoulder width, creases of the wrist straight ahead, and once you're ready, go ahead and lift the knees, take the hips way back, coming into downward facing dog. Not a mukha shwanasana. Keep the hands steady and deep in the breath. So as you inhale, feel your belly open and swell. Bend your knees, lift your sits bones. As you exhale, extend down generously from base of heart, past your hands. And then keep the sits bones lifting and go ahead and walk in place here. So you'll bend one knee as you generously extend down through the opposite heel. Keep breathing, even the back body here drenched with the movement to the breath. And then you can take a tempo of your walking feet in any way that supports you and feels most delicious to you right now. For some of us, it'll be really slow. For other, other of us, it'll be with a little more tempo, a little more speed. As you inhale, let's glide forward into plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now through each down dog, you can, can continue to bend the knees mm, until the low back and hamstrings feel a little more open. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. And that's the, the basic sequencing here. Inhale, plank. Exhale, downward facing. Let's take a few more rounds. So in plank, keep the hips lifted about the same height as your shoulders. So let's not let the hips sink down to the floor, but we're gonna keep them elevated, arms super strong. Good, the hips elevated about the same height as your shoulders in plank, right there. Yeah, good. Good, and one more time, let's gather, let's meet in plank pose. Now I want you to find a little bit more balance here, you guys. So from your pelvis, extend way back through your heels. Energetically right now, the, the line in this uh, circle, in this yurt, that line is short. So we have way more extension moving forward. But the extension that moves forward only moves from hips, right from the center of your hips, through the side bodies, through the spine, and then out through the head. But this has to be balanced with an energetic line reaching back. So from the center of your pelvis, keep reaching back through the legs and back through the heels. Keep that line long and come down slowly, elbows hugging in. So there's still this sense of clarity, alertness, awakeness in the legs. Inhale, come on up. Downward facing dog. Okay, so let's continue to pulse that. Inhale, come to the top of your push-up. Exhale, down to chaturanga. Still aware, alive in the legs. Inhale, top of a push-up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Pulse that two more times on your own. Can you continue to greet your every cell, every internal organ with the nourishment of your breath here? You can always come down to the knees and plank pose, so know that that's an option. Anytime we come through push-ups, anytime we come through chaturanga, the knees can lower and you can take that same sequencing there. Otherwise, from downward facing dog, go ahead and bring your feet together. And as you inhale, swoop the left leg up towards the sky. As you exhale, let's take that leg down and inhale, right leg swooping to the sky. Exhale, let's take that leg down. Good, continue this simple sequencing here. However, I really want you to take your awareness into your body. When we like something, when we love something, it's, it's easy to just pay a lot of attention to it. So drenching your body, saturating yourself with your attention, your awareness, is just yet another expression and offering of love. And I want you to feel what happens to your armpits, what happens to the shoulders as you lift your legs. And can you keep really solid, symmetrically through both shoulders, even as you lift the legs in an asymmetrical form? I'm gonna balance this out before hopping to the top of your mat. 
So coming to down dog, bend the knees, look to the top of your mat, and the end of an exhale, let's spring. Uttanasana, forward fold. Lift the muscles of the thighs up firmly. Interlace the hands behind your back as you inhale, widen the collarbones. Even visually, just see the, the upper back, the collarbone region of your body widening, opening, expanding. It's like creating more space for the chimney of the heart. And as you exhale, fold, fold deep, take the arms overhead. Just keep a little bend in your elbows here, please. And as you exhale, release the hands to the floor. Inhale, extend the spine long. Exhale, let's take the right leg back. Inhale, swoop the arms up. Coming into crescent pose here. Good, so we're gonna exhale, meet that back leg in and inhale, take it high. Here we go, exhale and inhale. Nice. Exhale, so keep it low. We're gonna keep that left knee nice and bent. Exhale. So move as if your arms are a reflection of the pulse of your breath. So it's very strong and steadfast in the legs. You can feel that, like the legs are incredibly powerful here. But as you begin to allow the arms to accentuate and be a reflection of the breath, feel how you can be both simultaneously strong and graceful. Two more. This is one. This is two. Take the right leg back and hold. We're gonna take the hands to the hips. Go ahead and bend the back knee. So we're just gonna soften the back knee out of the equation and curl that tailbone forward and release. Actually, I want you to visualize it more like the tailbone just curling straight down. Tailbone's rooting down, the pelvic floor muscles are lifting up. Rooting and releasing. Rooting and releasing. Let's do three more. As you inhale from your hips, get a little taller up into the armpits. Go ahead and extend the back leg straight. Inhale, reach the arms. As you exhale, let's take the hands into cactus. Hinge forward through the hips. And then breathing your way up. You're addressing a three. Warrior three. Here the back toes are pointing down to the floor. Yeah, and the toes are spread, even spreading out through the pinky toe. And then that becomes more the advanced form of the pose, if you will, to really have this heightened sense of awareness shining through the entirety of your body. Even the toes, the fingers are alive. Bend that supporting leg, quietly step way back through the right leg. Inhale, hands to the sky and exhale. We're coming to the top of our mat. Other side, yeah, left leg. Inhale, exhale. And if incorporating the arms right now just doesn't feel like it's uh, happening for you balance-wise, you can keep the hands to the hips. And that's a pretty good rule to follow. If, if the exercise is feeling too challenging in general as far as coordination goes, just focus on the legs. Get that rhythm into play. And once that's solid, then the invite to, to explore and play through the arms will open up for you. I want you to find a balance here between the heaviness and the rooted quality in the legs. So really establish that here as you play. From the hips, reach down heavily through both legs. Bones of the legs rooting down. And find a balance between that. As much as you're rooting down through the bones of the legs, from the low back, lift up through the spine. Last two, this is one. Nice, and two. Left leg back and hold. Hands to the hips, soften the back knee. So we're just gonna take the back leg out of the equation, root it, and release it. So you feel yourself opening through this hip flexor area. Good, and you can bend your back knee just a little bit more, hon. Keep it going. Yeah, so with the back knee bent, you're gonna get a little more range of motion here through the hips. The more the back knee is bent, the more range of motion you will get. And then with the tailbone rooted down, feel the engagement of the pelvic floor. Maintain that. Generously extend the back leg long. Inhale, revealing the magnificence of you. Stretch the arms. Exhale, hands to cactus. Breathe your hinge forward. 
breathe it hinge forward and then go ahead and step mindfully onto that right foot come on up Fear of addressing a three warrior three now i want you to pretend like i'm behind you trying to move your left leg off to the left and resist against that by hugging into the middle line so that both of your inner thighs now are more active and then maintain that active quality in the legs and breathe breathe fully into your back waistline yeah bend the right leg quietly reach the left leg way back inhale stretch the arms exhale hands to the floor let's step back downward facing dog and inhale come forward top of a push-up exhale coming down slowly let's interlace the hands behind the back point the toes top of the feet remain heavy on the floor inhale come on up exhale release inhale rising on up exhale release yet yeah, one more really extend here from the center of your groins all the way out through the big toes exhale coming down slowly let's take the thumbs to the base of our breast press straight up come on back downward facing dog gazing towards your fingers at the end of an exhale that's top four step to the top of our mat forward fold and then lifting the belly stretch down root down through the legs inhale come on up Ooh, exhale hands to heart okay ladies how you feel warm yeah all right grab a little drink if you like we're going to go into a little bit of stuff for the abs <laughs> So I'm going to interval this at one minute, and I'll give you different options as we go. Okay, so let's start here. We're going to take the hands wide, start with the feet wider than the hips. Keep the feet nice and parallel. Keep the spine lifted. As you inhale, hug the legs towards each other. So I want you to get that feeling of tone, strength in the inner thighs. And we're just taking it laterally, side to side. So we're gonna, we're gonna interval for one minute, and then we'll swap up the exercise. So we're gonna come into some abdominal play without having to lay down on the floor. <laughs> yes, I love it. So much more functional. Functional, would that be the way, <laughs> the way to say it? As you inhale, expand your heart. Mm, what a beautiful invitation to create spaciousness inside. And for me, it feels like if I just had these little feelers, antenna in my heart region, I just allow those to stretch and beyond and beyond and beyond that and just continue to open and reach. And I can even explore that as I reach out through my fingertips. So energetically here, be at least as big as the room you're in. Good, and come back. From here, we're gonna reach, like we're doing a little capoeira move, and reach. So it's like we're blocking a kick, yeah? Block it, and reach, and reach. Let's go. Keep it low, with the center gravity low through center. Keep going here. Yes, nice. And I really want you to feel the sides of your waistline supporting you here to create this nice, yummy range of motion feel the engagement of the low belly so there is a supported lift there the belly is not just hanging out but it's not a rigid hardening in the low belly either when we get this quality of a rigid hardening in the belly it really cuts us off energetically even in a way where emotionally we feel separate from. Come on onto two feet. Extend the arms out. Let's take the hands here and we're just gonna run. So I want the hands actually come right to the knees. Knees wide, knees high. Those knees lifted and energetically can you stay as big as the year at least. Maybe energetically as big as the town that we're in, if you're in. Good. 
Good, keep those shoulders relaxed. We're almost there. Yeah, yeah, we are there, <laughs> nicely done. Okay, you guys. Stay on two feet. Just rotate your palms up. You keep your eyes open or closed. Feel the quality in your belly here as you breathe. So I wanna take the time to slow it down and really feel, feel the feedback and the wisdom of our body. Feel the engagement of your low belly. Soften your belly. Soften your belly. Let your belly move as you breathe. This is a region of our being where we can hold on to fear, a feeling of separation. Yeah, we're stepping into a time where consciously, globally, we, were, we are remembering that we are one. But the illusion of the, the feeling separate from, separate from each other, separate from nature, it, it's truly an illusion. So with your palms open and your belly soft, exchange your breath with nature. As you inhale, receive the exhale of nature. In Hawaii, we call the, the life force mana. In yoga, prana. As you inhale, receive the mana of nature. And feel your body so incredibly happy to receive this gift. What if our body wishes nothing more than to just be taken care of in this way with attention? with loving awareness. As you inhale, gift your every molecule, your every fiber with the offering of nature. As you exhale, offer your breath back, knowing that nature thrives from this exchange. Feel the connection in that. Without the plants, without the grass, without the trees, we would cease to exist. Feel your connection as you share your breath, your connection with something immense and huge and grand and so incredibly beautiful. Good, and slowly release your hands, open your eyes, and, and so this feeling there that you get even in just that exchange of the breath and that mindfully uh, opening in that way, I would say that, that feeling that you have there when I say inhale and expand your heart, that's the feeling. So in case it's like, well, what does that mean? What's inhale and expand my heart? Ah, hopefully you just got a hit of what that really does feel like to energetically open and to soften something big. Okay, so for one minute, we're going to take it into tuck jumps. The alternative to tuck jumps looks like this. Just just lifting the knees, okay? So I'm like one at a time. Otherwise, we're gonna take it into tuck jumps. Let's do it. And you can take any tempo that works for you. Okay, so maybe it's fast. Or maybe you're slowing down. You've got one minute here. You may even take 20 seconds of a tuck jump and then take another, you know, 10 seconds, yeah? So you're intervaling your own minute to make it work for you. Maybe one tuck jump. Yeah. And then maybe five modifications. Woo! <laughs> stay big, energetically stay big. We're almost there. 10 seconds. Elbows under the shoulders. 
Wrists as wide as the elbows. Forearm plank. Option one, knees down. Option two, knees up. Now to lovingly activate the core here, the tailbone moves towards the heels. You can feel the low back lengthen as you do, but it doesn't round up to the sky. That would be too much curl in the tailbone. Feel the lift in your belly, but still invite the breath to caress the belly. Good, come to your knees. Come on up into plank. We're gonna step in and come to standing. Follow me, take it down. Now this is a modified, very modified burpee. Keep coming with me. Down and back. In and up. Yeah, down and back. <laughs> in and up. Okay, so that's one option. Yet another option is to take the burpee without the push-up. Keep going. Find a rhythm that works for you. We've got 25 seconds left. Keep those feet truly parallel. Energetically get as big as this room. Good. It's come to standing. Open the legs, bend the knees. Stand on the left, kick stand on the right. Reach. We're gonna come around to the glutes. Come back to a diagonal. Center gravity low. Reach. Twist to a diagonal. Reach. Center gravity low. Diagonal. Glutes. Diagonal. Low. Diagonal. Glutes. Diagonal. So you can feel we're really playing with some balance here. The weight comes to two legs, then one. Two legs. Then one. Would you pay attention to yourself? Give yourself the benefit of the doubt and move at a tempo that works for you so that you can feel. So you can feel the architecture of your body and the way in which it moves in space, the way in which even the movement of your hands is connected to what's going on in the hips. Squeeze. Lengthen. Squeeze. Lengthen. Squeeze. Come back to your breath. We're almost there. We're going to do one more each side. Get the most out of this. Juice that side body. Ready? Squeeze it. And squeeze it. Okay, bend those knees. Let's turn facing the ocean. Bend the knees, keep the knees centered over the, over the center of the foot. Yeah, sink that center of gravity low. Let the belly open, charge. Open and charge. Belly soft. Hard. Soft tone. Soft tone. Ha. Feel with attention. Feel your belly. Ha. 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 Keep going. Keep the head posture right ha. over the cervical spine. Ha. Beautiful. Ha. Ha. Stay ha. tuned to your core. Ha. Ha. Keep your focus. So find one place to focus on. And in love, keep the gaze there. Keep going. One more minute. Back, back by the pinky toe. Ha. 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 Ha.
You got it, Emily. Sink a little deeper in those knees. Yeah, Andy. Keep going if you're feeling tension in the neck. Reach your hands out, out, out. So they don't have to come over, overhead. Reaching parallel to the floor can take straight out of the neck. Lovingly keep your awareness in your core. Reach the arms out, hold the breath in. You can straighten the legs. Exhale, hands to your heart. Relax the hands. Walk the feet in so that you're comfortable in a comfortable stance. Rotate the palms up. Close your eyes, feel the energy in your palms. Feel the energy in your belly. Feel the energy in your back body and your throat. Energetically, when we are deliberately expansive and open and soft, in this place, it can be effortless to remember how connected we are to everything, to each other, to the sky, to the stars, to the moon, to the sun. Keep breathing and just relax here. Let all your efforts relax. What a sweet invitation to your being to relax and to sweetly expand. And when we feel connected to something vast and big, something divine and supportive, anxiety, stress, fear begins to take more of the background of our life as opposed to the foreground. However, when we're hardened, tense, contracted, energetically in this state, we feel separate from everything. And it feels like we're struggling against everything, like we're just swimming upstream. Soften your belly and breathe deep. And isn't it so amazing how the invitation to open, to energetically soften and expand, it's as close to us as our very own breath. Inner, inhale and lovingly expand your heart beyond what you even think is capable for yourself. Keep your feet rooted heavily on the floor. And inhale, expand your heart generously. Release your hands, open your eyes. So in, in this place of expansion, even challenge becomes a little more easy, if you will. Go ahead and turn to the front of your mat. So with that in mind, let's take a burpee set, uh, a burpee set with a Tabata, with a Tabata protocol. So we've, we've checked this out, yeah? So this is a modification of a burpee. Stepping out, stepping in, come to standing. As you step in and out, I just want you to keep the sit bones back and the low back long. Okay, so none of this. I'm gonna really put some wear and tear in the low back over time. Otherwise, you got the full burpee, we'll get the push up with it if we have it, okay? 10 seconds, full rest, and in that rest, I want you to just get expanded, get really big, get really bright. And then, to the best of your ability, maintain that brightness as you move through the challenge of high intensity, 20 seconds. I'm gonna take this for eight rounds. Four more seconds of rest. Here we go. In your push up, in your plank, keep the head in the same alignment with the entirety of the spine. So the head doesn't reach to the floor first. Nice, come to standing, rotate the palms up. 
and inhale. Soften your belly. Exchange your breath with nature. And go. Just standing, palms up, inner body expanding. You can always do the push up on your knees. Nice. What are you receiving? What are you allowing yourself to receive as you breathe? to do this next set better than your first set. What if your body had that capacity? You just yet haven't yet allowed your mind to open to that possibility. <laughs> Mindfully let your heart rest close to the earth. Downward facing dog, Adamukha Shwanasana. Let's bring our feet together. Inhale, lift your left leg up. Exhale, left knee to chest, three legged plank. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, three legged dog. Exhale, three legged plank, knee to heart, squeeze. Inhale, three legged dog. 
Exhale, three-legged plank. Hold here. Fill the back body up with breath. So there is a sense of ease, even within the effort. Now take the left knee to the right elbow. Twist and squeeze. Come back to center. Twist and squeeze. Come back to center. One more time. Twist and squeeze. Come back to center. Three-legged dog. Left leg down. Same sequence. Right side. Inhale. Right leg up. Exhale. Three-leg plank. Inhale. Three-leg dog. Here we go. On your own. Follow the wind of the breath. Invite the right toes to participate. Spreading the toes. Feel the energy in the right leg. Enliven. Three-leg plank. Right knee, left elbow. Squeeze. Release. Keep the neck long. Squeeze. Release. Last time. Squeeze. Release. Three-legged dog. Come to two feet. Knees, child's pose. Soften the effort of your body. Soften your belly. Soften your belly. And sweetly remind yourself of the connection you share with nature. It can be so amazing for me to consider the ways in which I'm so similar to water. Just the makeup of our being, 70% water even more so when we're born and to think that we we wouldn't even stay alive in our physical body if we didn't have water daily we definitely wouldn't thrive and within days we would literally cease to exist without water I mean how amazing and brilliant is this connection yeah how often do we just go through autopilot day in and day out and and drink water without any sense of gratitude or appreciation. Without the remembering of how truly connected we are to everything. Not separate from, but connected. With a sense of appreciation, just fold and soften into your own heart and let your breath wash over you. Keep this energetic bigness about you. You are the stars, you are the sky, you are the deep blue sea. In remembrance of that, glide yourself up and back into down dog. When you're ready, inhale, lift the left leg, and ex exhale, this time we're gonna step it through into a lunge. Spin the back heel down. So you'll take the back foot in a step, spin the heel down, and let's go ahead and extend the front leg towards straight. Possibly uh, you may want to block on either side of the front foot. So if the hamstrings are tight, please take the props you need. You can even keep your front knee bent a little bit. As you inhale, lovingly charge the muscles of the legs into the bones. And give yourself the permission to feel, to feel the way in which you embrace yourself. Do the muscles hug in with a sense of contraction, constriction, rigidity? And if so, simply just soften that, erase it, and try again. Our body can be so forgiving and so accepting. It's like, oh, you want rigidity? Let me give that to you. Oh, wait, no, you want softness. You want spaciousness. Let me gift that to you. Inhale, lengthen the spine long and into the magnificence of your being. Bow deep. We're going to transition onto the front leg, coming up into standing split. So go ahead and press down through the left foot. Extend the right leg towards the sky. And then lift your belly off that left thigh. Yeah, and extend down generously into your left foot. Nice, long, bold, right extension through that left foot. Keep that rooted quality and take the right foot up another two inches. Keep breathing. As you exhale, bend both knees and come into a little kneel. Right shin on the floor. <sighs> Yummy inhale, come on up, standing split. And this becomes the sequence that we pulse. Standing split, lift your belly off your thigh. 
Monica, so there's space in the left hip flexor. Exhale, come on down and kneel. Yes, good. Fill it with a lot of breath. Three more. Inhale. Lengthen as you exhale. Curl your left sit bone down towards your left footprint. Really root down heavily through the bones of your left leg. Lift the right leg up another inch. Exhale, come to kneel. And I want this transition to the floor to be very uh, mindful, like a lot of attention as you transition out. Inhale, come on up. Exhale, scoop your left sit bone down, down into your left footprint. And now come down slowly and feel. Feel the architecture of your body supporting you. Yeah, yeah. Last mm. time. <laughs> This time, transition into a lunge. Bend your supporting leg, step way back. Lunge, downward facing dog. Go ahead and walk the dog. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, right leg through into a lunge. Pause in your lunge. Can you feel the current of your breath here? Because if you don't give yourself the permission then to soften and to feel it here, what gives you any per what gives you really the benefit of the doubt to be able to experience it in something like a standing split pose establish that foundation here and once you can feel your breath moving so sweetly then step in and straighten the front leg parsvottanasana opening up the hamstring on the right leg here i'm going to stay here for a, bit, a few deep breaths you'll step in a little closer so you can spin the back heel down yeah, and this foot might come over here a little better. Good. Nice. And you can possibly even take your back foot back just a little bit, Mandy. Good. It's like, what if your every cell, your every little fiber of muscle in your body right now is just like, yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're bathing me with attention and you're bathing me with care. And the body inside is just like, yes, 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 yes. But we're so caught up in the dialogue of our mind that we don't even get to, to enjoy the, the practice the way the body can and does and will, especially if we attune to it and we allow it. Bend your supporting legs, step onto the right foot, come on up standing split. Lift your belly right away from the right quad. Scoop your right sit bone down and keep energetically extending like an like a ancient tree down through the trunk of the leg past your foot. Reach past your yoga mat. Reach past the basement of this room. Reach down into the soil, into the earth. And then with that same enthusiasm, lift your back leg from hip up through toes up towards the sky because we are the connection between the earth and the heavens. Exhale, slowly come down into your kneel. And then delight in the play of the body becoming that antenna, rooted into the earth and rising and reaching up into the sky. So we'll sequence here on our own, standing split into kneel. As you stay energized in the entirety of your being, come into your kneel for a moment and just rest for a couple breaths. Close your eyes and with your fingertips touching the earth, I want you to consider all the ways in which your physical makeup is similar to the makeup of dirt and soil. How is it that you are similar to the earth in this way? Not separate from, but connected to. How is it that you are similar to soil? Keep your right foot alive and alert, awake on the earth. Come on up, standing split.
and to the universe within you bow deep coming into a kneel good pulse it back up lift the belly curl the right sit bone down 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 reach a little higher through the left foot breathe your way down we're gonna do one more and as you come up to this nice bright full open extension in your standing split check that the right knee does not hyperextend. okay keep the supporting like it'll go straight possibly maybe it'll stay bent but i want you to not hyperextend the knee joint back soften the skin on your back body let your spine cascade hmm. and come down slowly into a lunge lunge downward facing and let's come right onto our knees good on the knees let's take the right leg back <clears throat> we're gonna take the right knee all the way up into the upper right tricep and extend back up high into the tricep and extend back good as you extend that right leg back i really want you to squeeze through the glutes squeeze and squeeze so it's a side body and then outer hips and glutes Keep the neck long all the way through the spine. Spine long all the way through the neck. Good, now I want you to keep this right knee high. So if I was kneeling underneath your body here, you've got to lift above me. <laughs> yeah, keep that height to it. Last two. Good, extend that leg. Now I want you to lift your left knee, come up, three-legged dog. Step the right leg through into a lunge and bend the back knee so it's almost touching the floor. Here are the fingertips and the toe tips are in the same line. Yeah, good, so it feels like you're about to sprint. We're at the, at the go line. With each inhalation, lengthen your spine like you're playing a musical instrument. The breath moves in, the spine lengthens, opens with the breath. Keep your right sit bone curling under you. So your right hip flexor lifts up. It doesn't collapse down, but it's lifting. Now get really heavy in your right heel. Can you take your back knee a little closer to the floor, Mom? Really heavy in the right heel. And again, as you inhale, open. Energetically get as big as the town you're in. Step the right leg back, three-legged dog. Come down onto your knees. Stay on the right side, knee is up and down. Knee up and down. Keep the tone in the low belly. And if you want a little bit more than this, you can extend the leg at the top of that lift. Okay, your choice, wherever you are though, I want the energy in your right foot uh, turned on. So spread those toes. Last four, four, three, three, two, two. On these last two, go super slow. Lift and lower, even slower. Yeah, come to all fours. Pulse the hips to the right. Gaze back to your left foot. Oh yeah. And gaze, or press the hips to the left. Gaze back to the right foot. Again, pressing to the right. Lengthening all the way up through that right side body as well as the outer right hip and glute. And pressing to the left, opening up through the left side body. Coming to all fours, left leg back. Inhale, exhale. Good, feel the connection here. The left side body shortens, it tones. And as you extend your left leg back, activate the left glute. Squeeze the muscles of the quads and hamstrings and inner thighs. Squeeze them into the bone lovingly. Whew. 
want you to keep your attention fully in your left leg because you're going to feel the right side body go holy moly, the right glute and the right hip. Put your attention wholeheartedly into your left side. Where your mind goes, energy follows. Come on, turn that left side on. Last four. Three. Can you lengthen your neck another centimeter? Good. Three-legged dog. Woo! Step the left foot through. Come into a lunge. Lower the back knee so the knee is just about touching. Here, the fingertips and toe tips are in the same line. See, so feel this. Take your fingers way in front of you. And can you feel the quality of the heart here? It's like it just hollowed out its sunkenness. It, the heart's literally hard here. You can even feel how the breath, there's a connection between the hard heart and the shallow breath. Now walk the fingertips back so they're in the same alignment with the toe tips and get heavy in your left heel. The back knee is just hovering the earth here. If it gets too challenging, of course, you can put the back knee down. And now here, feel the space of the heart. Feel the connection between the space of your heart and the fluid fullness of your breath. I've actually once heard a statistic that we can energize ourselves like 99% of our energy. Not from food, mm -hmm. not from sleep, but from, from breath, from the way in which we breathe. That seems like a pretty astonishing number, but even if it's just a fraction of the way right, I mean, we, we obviously know how the breath affects our day. Let's place the hands, three-legged three -legged dog pose, and come on back down to your knees. The, pre the breath, the awareness, the fluidity, the fullness of our breath is paramount to the state of our energy, of our energetic body. Left leg up and down. And we just got a sweet, simple, simple yet profound hit of when our heart is expanded, how much more optimally we breathe in comparison if the, the heart is contracted or hardened. So the knee can stay bent. Keep the spine long, and if you'd like a little more, you can extend the leg straight at the top of that lift. Can you stay in your body here? Keep the awareness in the body. I can feel that not only my glutes working, but my side waistline working. What other parts of your body are happily getting turned on here as you play? Four. Four. Three. Three, two, two, last two in slow motion. Open your throat. Yeah, coming to all fours. Let's start to circle the hips. So get a little bit more of a saucy, uh, silky, circular motion here. and move as if you were dancing, like madly in love with the breath. And then reverse the hips, the circle. Point the toes, settle back into child's pose. Soften your belly. Soften your belly, remember. I want you to bring into your awareness somebody that you love dearly. Somebody that just in their presence makes you feel so happy. So expansive. And then begin to consider all the ways in which you're similar to this person. Mm. 
And can you gaze at this person from the place of your divinity, gazing at the place of their divinity? And as you do, just relax and breathe. Come on up slowly. What if we gaze at the whole wide world this way? Okay, so let me show you what the modification of this next stretch looks like. It looks like this sitting down. So we can come into the hips of which we just twerked pretty good there, the hips and the glutes, in this way. Otherwise, we're gonna take this form in down dog and it'll look like this. From down dog, we're gonna bend the supporting leg Make a shelf with that top leg and go ahead and we'll perch it there. So you find what works best for you. If you're really uh, tight in the outer hips and glutes here, you might find it best to sit on your butt and try to stretch that way. Otherwise, coming into down dog, bend your left knee generously. Place your right foot atop of the left knee. Keep your right foot flexed. So the ankle is flexed evenly on both sides. Really flex. Yeah, there you go, Emily. Oh, flex back more. Yeah, there you go. Good, and then bend the knees a lot. Lift your sit bones way up high into the sky. And as you inhale, place your uh, imagination right in the center of your pelvis. And as you inhale, widen your pelvis with your imagination. Widen it left and widen it right. Possibly walking your hands back to your feet here. So you'll keep your legs where they are. You'll just walk your hands back. So you'll come into more of a balancing pose on the left foot. Possibly you'll stay in down dog. So you'll find the depth of the pose that works for you. Let's take another two full breaths here before we swap sides. If you did make it to your foot, we're gonna take the hands to the hips to come out to standing. So either we'll swap sides or we'll come into down dog and take it to the other side. So in down dog, bend the right leg, take the left foot atop of that. Flex the foot back so that the ankle joint is evenly articulated. So it's not contracted on one side and extended on the other, but it's just nice and even through the four sides of the ankle. Bend the knees, really lift the sits bones, perch them up towards the sky. And then slowly walk the hands back, or just stay there in down dog, continuing to reach the sits bones up towards the stars. Nice, flex that foot back really big, Amanda. Yes, good. So working the top foot, what, it, what that does for us is it keeps the knee joint happy. When the hips are tight, the knee is gonna try to compensate for what the hips aren't doing. So it's the closest joint to the hips. So when the hips are tight, the knee tries to Take the beating, if you will, for what the hips are not able to do in range of motion. However, there's good news. Just keeping the feet active and optimal will keep the knees healthy as we work the hips. Come on out slow. Does that make sense? Any questions with the feet, the knees, in relation to the hips? Okay, so let's go ahead and come to the wall. We're gonna play with a little bit of inversion. If you don't wanna invert today, you could play with um, just working downward facing dog to, to get stability in the arms there. Otherwise, we're gonna come to the wall and let me show you what we're gonna do. If you are confident in a handstand, okay, and you know you have the, sh the strength in the shoulders to play, we're gonna bring the legs up. I want the shoulders to be right over the, the wrists. So it's not here and it's not here, but we get this nice stack, shoulders right over wrist. And I want you to just play. And you can play and explore if you're, if you're confident and strong. But take it slow. Otherwise, let me show you what the basics of that looks like. Okay, alternating hand to thigh. And if just looking at that makes you go, oh, no, not for me, then it's just, you're just holding inversion here, okay? 
Keep the shoulders over the wrist. Place your legs in any comfortable spot. Okay, so a couple options. Either we're working with some asymmetry. If you're um, at my lattice, just go where there's green behind you and not screen behind you. You got it, Monica, good. This is okay. Um, see how your, your foot, if you were to go through that lattice, you'd go through my screen? So go, put your foot where the green is. Yes. Yeah, does that make sense? So no, you don't want the green, you want the lattice. Oh, I get it. Yes, good. So you just, like, if you were, you got it now. Nice, ladies, in the handstand. Yeah, if you're not work, if you're not used to inversions, you will feel it in the wrist. And there's ways that we can refine that. But for the most part, it, you know, it's how often are you this weight bearing on the hands? Mm -hmm. Spread the fingers and press the finger pads down. Good. Press the finger pads down, Mon, Mana. And then keep your focus. If you're new to handstands, keep your focus towards your thumbs. This will just help to keep your shoulders more firmly on the back. Now supercharge the arms to the midline, Monica. Make your arms strong and straight. We'll stay here about maybe one more minute. <laughs> what else is possible for you in your body right now that you've just yet opened up your conscious awareness to believe it's true for you? Yeah, so it looks beautiful. So if you're play, so with the shoulders over the wrist, that's if you're playing with just straight up and down, right? And if you feel solid and strong, then you can waver from that as you go into one hand. But if you're just working the foundation of building the strong handstand, I want you to keep the real solid stack of shoulders over wrist. Let's try just one more of these. Yeah, awesome. Super strong, beautiful. And then to open up the wrist joint, I want you to take your um, hand in right above this knobby wrist bone. On the other side, like not where your fingers are, but on the other side of that, I want you to squeeze. Squeeze and then release. So we're squeezing on this side, creating contraction so that we can create more extension on the other side of the wrist where we just had all that uh, flex, flexion in it. So you'll just squeeze and release and squeeze and release and we'll try that on both wrists. And then we're going to try one more inversion here. Again, if playing with these different uh, little expressions and in our inversion isn't for you, then just come back to the foundation of the L hoop. Otherwise, we're gonna play with Moonwalker and we're gonna try to do, let's try to do like up to six on each side. And this is what it looks like. The shoulders again will be right over the wrist. Keep the focus near your hands. We're gonna tap one leg down to the floor. Slowly lift it to the sky. It's not gonna go behind you. Just straight up and down. Touch the floor, touch the sky floor and sky and you'll see my supporting leg is about the same height what Mandy is about like my hips uh, it's a little bit higher a little bit higher your knees in line with your hips and then your knees in line and then your foot is higher so a little bit higher than hips is where and you can play with that it's not like a must have the foot here type of thing uh, but it may be helpful to have an outline as to where to, to have that foot let's try about six on each side give it a go moonwalkers here, move at a slow enough tempo that you can really feel the architecture of your abdominals, of your hip flexors. So of course we're working the upper body and shoulders. It's just the, one of the gifts of inversion. But here as we begin to play with the legs and the movement of body, a conscious movement of body in space, how is your core supporting you in doing so? And then touch those toes to the floor. And 
Yes, to the floor, good. Now touch it up to the sky. Yes, so your left foot stays on the lattice, good. Now come down, right toes to floor. Yes, right toe to sky. And when you put your right toes on the floor this time, Emily, don't wait for it, just touch it. Like, touch, back up. Yes, that is, that is it. Touch to the sky, good. Touch, it's like you're just teasing the floor with your toes. <laughs> good. You made them so easy. Bink. <laughs> Bink, did you guys do both sides? I didn't do three. <laughs> Let me show you one thing as you go into this next one. As I come to the top of my handstand, I'm isometrically pulling my legs to the midline. What pose does this look like that we've already done today? Standing splits. Uh, standing splits, kind of, or Vera 3. And remember in the Vera 3, when I was like, pretend like, you know, if, if I was trying to push your foot this way, and you're really squeezing it into the midline, and keeping that tone in the inner thighs, I want you to keep that same idea about it as you're doing this moonwalker. So the inner thighs are really strong. There's a sense of keeping the legs hugging towards the midline, even as the legs are uh, moving. That'll give you a whole lot of body awareness. It'll give you a whole lot of uh, midline connection. Mm -hmm. One more, Mandy. Good, come on up and squeeze me. Yes, good. So that's the middle line that you're in handstands. To hug into that middle line is so huge. And that's actually one major aspect of getting out of a wrist. When we can hug and find midline, then we can really root energetically with, with the rooting down and the rising up. But if we don't have that hug to the midline, it, it's just gonna be all weight bearing in the wrist. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's come on back to the center of the room. Any questions with handstands? We just played with us some different variations with the wall today, but. Okay, okay. Ooh. All right, you guys, let's come on to our backs. And just lie on your back, take your left arm across the body, reach out through your fingertips, breathe into the left shoulder, breathe behind the left side of your heart space. Mm. Good, then open both arms out to the side, turn the palms up, just relax your body, relax your belly. Open your throat. Let the entirety of you be breathed. Reach your right arm across your body. Keep saturating your every molecule with your breath. Good, open the arms, turn the palms up, just relax the back side of the arms onto the earth. Hmm. Take a sighing exhale with me, full inhale, belly opens. Ah. One more time. Rolling over to your belly. Let's interlace the hands behind our back. And top of the feet heavy here. Inhale, lift the shoulders. With the front of the shoulders lifting away from the heart, stretch the heart forward towards the top of your mat. Stretch your legs back. And come on down slowly. A few more times, inhale, rise on up. Good, keep the front of the shoulders lifting, soften the heart, stretch the heart forward, reach your toes back. Good, come on down slowly. Again, come on up. Front of the shoulders reaching, lifting away from the floor. 
Yeah, with the exhale, let the heart settle towards the earth and stretch the heart forward, stretch the big toes back. Nice. And just one more time, come on up. Good. Stretch your belly forward, stretch your thighs back. Nice, coming on down slowly. Let's go ahead and take a thigh stretch here so you can take your forehead onto your forearm. Either that or you can come up onto your forearm. If you want it deeper yet, you can come all the way up onto your hand. So a few different options here. Really, I just want you to get into the quad though. Open that up without compromising your low back. Can you feel the tendency here to clench the butt? Mm -hmm. So there's a tendency to clench the butt and what that will do, just keep stretching, keep breathing. As we clench the butt, we thrust this forward and we create a lot of compression in the low back. So the butt will tone, the tone of the butt will move down, but it's not gonna grip and clench in because that totally affects the position of the femurs of the low back. So try to refine that to the grip of the butt. It's not gripping, but it's toning, it tones down. Slowly release out of that and let's be mindful of that as we switch sides. If we grip the butt too, it's like the, the mind is thinking that we're moving the tailbone, but we're actually just like suffocating the tailbone. There's not any muscles in the glutes that connect to the tailbone. So there's no way we can clench the butt and actually uh, move the tailbone. But the muscles that do connect to the tailbone are the labanar ani, the pelvic floor, and then in relationship to that, the low belly muscles will lift up some as well. But the pelvic floor muscles in comparison to like the butt muscles are just so much smaller, right? They're just, they don't, they're not as powerful and as strong. And then slowly release. So what happens in our body is the muscles that are biggest and broadest and strongest, that's gonna be the part of our body that, that moves first and fastest. First and fastest. And if we're not taking the time and the care and the attention with ourselves, can you imagine what, what happens when we just continuously train the biggest, hardest parts of the body? They just get stronger. And, and the parts that are smaller and a little more weak, they never have the opportunity to come forth and to really be able to strengthen. Because the fastest or the, one, the part of the body with the most range of motion, it, if it goes first and fastest, we never give possibility, opportunity to the stickiest parts. To the, to the weaker parts. So this is where really slowing the practice down, especially as we're uh, stretching more or in the strength training um, exercises, to really slow it down and to be so mindful, wow, what part of my body wants to go first and fastest? And can I, and can I slow that down? Can I back that off and give way to that part of my body that tends to be a little more sticky or a little more uh, well, not so strong? So let's just try one more time a thigh stretch on each side with that understanding. Wow, can I slow down that part of my booty that just wants to grip and thrust? Can I slow that down and can I get into my pelvic floor and low belly and see if I can really in, uh, articulate and, and strengthen some of those muscles even here on a quad stretch. When we take this practice into play, we can really program the body in such a therapeutic way to create a lot of balance and a lot of fluidity in the body. Switch sides. Did that feel any different at all? Just being in the body a little bit different. What tends to be the most flexible part of most humans' spine? What part of the spine? Middle. Middle? Um, upper shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you guess? Oh, back. Oh, we got a middle upper and a lower. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. 
And the winner is, it typically is the lower back. In here, you know, like L4, L5, it's like, that's where a lot of people tend to blow out their back, like where most surgeries are, where most people get like a lot of back pain. It's because it's the most flexible part of the back. So let's just take a cobra pose, for instance. Does this look familiar? Like if you're in a, uh, in a room of a lot of yoga people coming into cobra, it's like boom, cobra, boom. The arms are straight. And look how unflexible here my upper back is. You even see the space in my heart. It's rigid, like we spoke of earlier. So how's my breath going to be here? <sighs> like not very good, huh? not very fluid. So. Over time, what's going to happen to that hinge in my low back? If I just keep working the most flexible, 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 break, right? Over time, that hinge is just going to But if I can stabilize the most mobile, draw the tailbone down, stabilize that, then I can give permission here to get into what tends to be the most rigid or sticky part of human spine is more up through the thoracic. And now by stabilizing the low back, I give permission for that upper back to come into play. Now look, the, look at the expression of my heart here in comparison to, would you say my heart is more spacious or more closed off? Mm. Way more spacious. And so then what happens is once I get that more, that uniform fluidity through the spine, then I can go ahead and invite in the most flexible part, but not at the expense of just getting really flexible through the place that's already flexible and then keeping the sticky part sticky. So just try a few cobra poses in your own time, in your own way. Just explore that. Explore the possibility of, of opening up greater possibility for the part of you that's just yearning and churning to come forth, to unfold. The way that we stabilize the most flexible part of the back, the low back, is by rooting the tailbone. We spoke some today about rooting the tailbone. The tailbone gets rooted not by clenching the butt, but the tailbone gets rooted by using the pelvic floor muscles and the low belly muscles. So in Cobra, to really get into here, Mana, I want you to give yourself the permission to bend your elbows generously. Generously, bend your elbows a lot. We, we perceive that we're doing this back bend by straightening the arms, mm -hmm. but it's actually doing nothing to get, okay, come down even more, come down even more, and then lengthen your, your neck, chin down. There we go. Okay, that for you is brilliant cobra. Keep working right there. No more straightening in your elbows. Keep the elbows right there. Yeah. And make your hands real big and isometrically pull them back. That'll actually give you traction to move forward through the low back and lengthen that. Good. Yeah, and then you can start to curl that, start to open it. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice softening there. With that exhale, nice and good. All right, let's push on back into child's pose. How did that feel, you guys? Good. Somebody pulled me up. <laughs> What's that? Especially when you came. Yeah. Through. yeah. So just coming into the body with a, it just a, a new perspective. Wow, what would happen if I slowed down the most flexible part, if I slowed down the most strong part and opened up greater possibility for that part of me that's just longing to come forth. Bow into the fullness of who you are and breathe deep. Here as you're bowed into your heart, silently thank your body for all the ways in which it shows up for you. I mean, isn't it really amazing to just ponder the way, even the way in which we can train. We can train and work our muscles to be hard and rigid. And the body is just like, okay, if you want that, I can, I can do that for you. I can give that to you. However, if we practice with the intention of becoming both strong and graceful, stable and fluid, the body's like, okay, I can give that to you too. 
How generous is our body? How amazing is this gift of embodiment with full appreciation for your body? Soften. Breathe deep. As you inhale, come on up. Option one is just to take a crisscross with the leg in front, and we'll come on to the forearms. And if you feel like you want a little bit of a deeper stretch, we're going to take fire logs. So we'd flex the ankles way back and stack the shins so that the shins are like parallel to the front edge of your sticky mat. This is a pretty deep, a pretty deep one. So the ankles are going to be flexed on all sides. So if we have them where it's, see how up here it's contracted? and the other side is extended. This is gonna translate into contracted knee joint and extended on this side. Can you see that? Visually you can see that, yeah? Like, oh, it's short and long. So that's going to be reflected in my knee, short and long. And can, could you understand how that's not super healthy, really, for the longevity of the knees, that we wanna have the knees it, more supported. So then by flexing the ankles back, can you visually see how this translates into a, a more refined articulation in, in the joint of my knees? So we want to keep this action in the foot as we fold forward. Yeah, awesome, you guys, much better. And if you're just in a simple crisscross, just flex the toes back. So it'd be more like this, flex the toes back and fold. So you're not worried about the ankle joint so much, just keep the, uh, the, the toes active. Let's take three full breaths on each side. And to really turn on those outer hips, you can use your thumb and your finger and put them to the inseam of the foot and push into that. Oh, that'll turn those outer hips on. So you're pushing forward through the inseams of your feet. Regardless of where you are, Form of your pose, take your mind's eye into the very center point of your pelvis and use your visualization and use your breath to widen, intrinsically widen your pelvis as you inhale. As you inhale, widen the space behind your navel, right in the middle line of your body, widen that out. Right in the center of your heart chakra. Inhale and widen that space out. Come on up. And we'll swap sides. So either we're crisscrossing or we'll so so I see as I crisscross I'm kind of just flexing back my toes. So it's like a floint foot there. Is that word floint? Floint. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a flex, point, a flex it's not a point. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Flex point. So again, it's like we're going to push through the inner edges of the feet. And as you push forward through the inner edges of the feet, the pinky toe side of your foot draws back. Yes, Emily. Brilliant. Let's take three full breaths. Each breath creating a little bit more widening through the midline of the body. Just intrinsically get in there and widen it out with breath. Come on out, slowly extend your legs. We'll come right onto our backs. Mm. On your back, go ahead and extend your left leg long under the earth. Squeeze the right knee into the chest. And then swap sides. Try that just a few times. I want you to be less concerned about the top leg and more concerned about the bottom leg. So the bottom leg really integrates, uh, hug the muscle into the bone and try to keep the back of that leg pressed down into the floor. 
what's going to happen is this bottom leg is going to want to pop up, and that's going to create this alignment again. So the legs thrust forward when you get the compression in the low back. I want you to press your legs back, keep the tailbone rooted, and we'll come into more of an optimal blueprint for the body. Yeah, Emily, nice. So think of, uh, yeah, go ahead with the other side. Go ahead and arch your low back a little bit. Yeah, and I see how that helped to extend that leg. So, so play with that idea just a little bit. So the top of the sacrum will be lifted, but you can still curl the tailbone, but keep that, keep that natural curve in the, in the low back so that you're not flattening it out. Okay, so keeping that bottom leg firm, let's take the right leg up to the sky. And take a little hamstring stretch here. You're gonna feel the tendency for the, the bottom leg, your left leg to wanna lift away from the floor, resist that. And resist that by lovingly hugging the thigh muscles into the bone and using that integration to press your femur down into the earth. The rooting of the femurs in this way is so nourishing to the nervous system. It's healthy for the hips, it's healthy for the low back. Slowly release and switch sides. What would you say when the body goes into flight and fight? Is the breath more fluid and optimal or is it shallow and restricted? Yeah, more shallow and restricted. And if you were to um, choose between which posture is more flight and flight, come out of that pose slowly. Would you say this is more flight and fight? Or this is more flight and fight? The femur bone's pushing forward. It's like this gripping and lifting of, of the quad muscles is very flight and fight. It's very anxiety and like <gasps> kind of this emotional uh, imprint, if you will, of like fear. And so to let that settle, to let the femurs move back energetically for our body can be very settling. And then the breath just moves with more ease. Ah, energetically it just feels more spacious. So go ahead and open up the legs, rotate your palms up, let your body rest on the earth as you close your eyes and in loving awareness saturate every cell every molecule every internal organ with the gift of your attention with the gift of your breath Remember how willing the body is. It's like, oh, you want rigidity? I'll give you that. Oh, you want spaciousness? Yes, let's do that. Remembering the willingness of your body, silently and sweetly ask your body to breathe with every cell, with every molecule. Body, would you be willing to receive the breath. With every single cell. Body, would you be willing to receive the nourishment from my attention and from my care?
Keep relaxing, keep softening your belly. And just dropping breath by breath into deeper relaxation. Soften the muscles of your thighs. And just allow your femurs to effortlessly settle back into the back plane of your body more deeply towards the earth. Keep breathing with every pore. Feel the connection between your breath and your body. Slowly bend your knees, place your feet on the floor. Draw the knees into your chest. Lovingly embrace yourself. Place your feet onto the floor, we'll roll to our side. Press on up and take a seat. Go ahead and take a comfortable seat, we'll come upright. With your eyes closed, rotate your palms facing up. you inhale, expand your heart. Feel the wave of the breath move through you. A gentle wave rising and falling. As you inhale, receive the life force, the mana of nature. And as you exhale, do so in gratitude. Do so in offering, knowing that nature thrives from the exchange of our breath. Feel your connection to nature as you breathe. Feel the infinite spaciousness of your heart.
Taking your hands to a prayer. Continue to breathe deep with your belly soft. Take a moment to consider the universe within you. And with your breath moving deep, take a moment to consider all the ways in which the universe within you is similar to the universe outside of you, the stars, the sun, the moons, the galaxy. How is the universe within you similar to the universe outside of you. And into the spaciousness we bow. Namaste. Namaste.